now that we have our object selected, now we need to draw that in our sketchbook or a sheet of paper, uh, giving it primarily outline and just a few contours to kind of understand what it is that we're looking at. We're also going to try and draw it to scale of the original object, so we're not going to make it bigger, we're not going to make it smaller. We're trying to draw it the same size so that we can work with the principle of scale. So if you're looking at the object and you're looking for your outline, that's your outer barrier in space. It depends how you look at it. If you looked at it straight on, your outline would be different. Three quarters from this side might be slightly different from the back. You get to choose which angle you want to make it from. I just chose a three quarter front profile view. So that was how I drew my outline here. Um, outline being the outer edge. Contours. When I looked at my outline drawing and I just had the outline, you could not tell what it was. It didn't make any sense. It was just a weird kind of triangle. Once I added in a few contours for the grill and for where the door and the windows turn on the cab, right here, here, and this one here, then we start to understand what we're looking at. So when you have enough lines for someone to be able to understand what it is they're looking at, that's all you need. We don't need super fine detail, we just need enough lines to be descriptive and communicate clearly and have a good design. Your goal, once you have your drawing, is to transform that into wire. Okay, You've got two gauges of wire in your kit. You're going to have a uh, roll or a partial roll of um, black bailing wire or tie wire. They use this to tie rebar when they're doing foundation work. Um, it's annealed. Annealed means it's soft and easy to bend and manipulate. It doesn't take much force at all. Um, because it's annealed, they heated it and then allowed it to cool uh, slowly. So that produces scaling to stop the rust. They put a little bit of oil on it so your hands will get dirty. Uh, ends are sharp, so make sure you wash your hands should you scratch yourself with this in your kit. You will also have some thinner gauge wire that we're using for tying. So if we're looking at this model here, and let me see if I can get that to focus, you can see right here I tied two ends of the wire together to make a single joint. So this is a separate piece from here. So that's what that thinner wire is. Your thick wire is 16 gauge. You do not want to try and tie uh, the rest of the wire to this, other than unless you're trying to tie rebar together. Use your 24 gauge wire. Uh, gauge is a rather strange term if you're hearing it for the first time, but the bigger the number, the thinner the wire. The smaller the gauge, the thicker the wire. Okay. So, like I said, if you have enough lines to understand what we're looking at, then you have a place to start. What I'm going to recommend is that you have a pair of safety goggles. Um, you're working alone, but still you can hurt yourself sometimes. Um, when we're cutting wire, and we take our wire cutters. One, we make sure we don't cut into our finger, but we're cutting on here. Sometimes, when you cut a small piece, it flies across the room, and I think you heard the clitter clatter of that small little piece of metal flying. Um, so that's why I recommend wearing safety glasses. Another thing you can do is hold on to both ends of the wire cut in the middle. You're reducing the risk of something flying and hitting you. So, recommended safety goggles. Okay, in your kit, you also have a few pairs of pliers. You'll have a couple of different profiles. Not a good example here. I have the same profile, but uh, profiles being if this is rounded, if it's got teeth, if it's flat. Um, different pliers will help you hold the wire um, differently or better. It just depends on the certain circumstance in which the bend that you're trying to achieve. So what I like to do is, sorry, 
I'm going to try to get you an overhead shot here. We're going to use this as a template. You can see the page is kind of already dirty because I've already made one of the templates. So you can see that kind of matches my lines plus or minus a little bit. But still to scale of the original, I'm going to take a relatively long piece of the 16 gauge bailing wire. I'm going to cut it and now I have a line, right? So just like I did with the pencil to make this drawing, I'm going to place it uh, anywhere. You can try and see where you want your starting and stopping point of your line. So think about bending this wire the same way that you drew this drawing. Where you start and where you end is entirely up to you. Just make sure you have a way to connect. Okay, so I'm going to start right here where I did last time. I'm going to hold this here. I'm going to try and press down on the page and I'm going to bend with my hand. And you can see it's not easy because I have a smaller piece to hold on to. But if I hold the wire down here on my line drawing with a pair of pliers, and my pliers are going to be right where that cor corner is, I can then bend my wire into place. Okay. So already I have that kind of a line going right there that matches. I need to make another sharp bend to go from the back of the tractor to come up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go again, I'm going to hold my pliers right where that joint is, and then I'm going to bend the wire in the other direction. So you can see the lines that I've got going here with the wire already match some of those. Okay, same thing. I'm going to come up here to my next bend. I'm going to hold this with my pliers, and then I'm going to bend the wire again. Okay. All right. See, it's starting to come out. Put that there. Bend again. Take this wire. Bend it again. Come over here. Right with my pliers again. It's going to move. It's going to slide on you. Don't worry too much. Sometimes you might find you went too far. You can unbend it a little bit. And now I'm starting to get the front of that cap, or the front of the hood. Okay. So you can see how we're starting to develop that line in space. I'm trying to stay to my lines that I made on the paper so that I can maintain proportions and I can maintain scale. I'd continue all the way around until the two wires meet, and then I would tie them together. I'm not going to show you the tying in this video, so please watch the uh, detailed video on how to make joints and connections. You'll find in your Canvas course links to other people's videos, but um, in mine I'm going to show you specifically the ones where uh, I tied these parts together, which to, in my mind might be a little bit cleaner because we're looking at this as line, and if you have a big bundle of wire where you're trying to make a joint, your line's going to be too thick and not represent what you're trying to say. So in the next video, please look at how to make your connections here.